Instagram and Ravelry, both as Avid Knits. Uh, today is Friday, January 8th, January 8th, um, and it is, I don't even know, I don't know what it's like outside, I haven't been outside. Uh, it's kind of overcast, um, I'm coming to you from Houston, Texas, and it has been a long time. <laughs> so if you are a new viewer, hi, welcome. There's a lot of you since Vlogmas. Thanks so much for coming by, checking out the podcast. I hope that you enjoy it and that you'll stick around. And for those of you who are returning, when I said that I might slow down in September, you guys, I did not mean it would come to a full stop. I am so sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been since like September or October, maybe. I don't really remember. Um, I feel like it was maybe later in October. I want to say that I talked about surgery, that I had had surgery. I'll have to look it up. Anyway, it's not important right now. Um, yeah, how are you? Did you guys get through holidays okay? Do you not celebrate holidays and didn't care? Um, has 2021... <laughs> I saw a meme the other day that said... Uh, Not a, not a meme. It was from Adela's husband, uh, Lola Bean Yarn Company. It's from Jimmy. And he said that uh, your seven-day trial subscription to 2021 has will end tonight at 11.59, but unfortunately your payment has already been drafted and can no longer be refunded. We're sorry for the inconvenience. And I was... It was funny, but at the same time, it kind of made your heart hurt, you know? <laughs> 2021 has definitely been... Uh, an overachiever for one week old. Um, yeah, so um, if you're new here, let's have some disclaimers if you're new here. Okay, so my name is Sarah. Um, I am a sample knitter. I do a lot of sweaters. I did 20 last year. I have a bonus video coming out for you guys for 20 sweaters in 2020. Um, <laughs> if you're new here, and you are expecting this to be a run-of-the-mill, escape from your daily problems, uh, super neutral, we don't talk politics or bad things going on in the nation podcast, and you are in the wrong place. Thank you so much for checking me out. This will not be the podcast for you. I would rather that we don't have any disagreements with one another. Please do not feel necessary to announce that you're leaving. You may just unsubscribe or block me or whatever it is that you want to do, and you may go on about your day uh, with that's your right. You can do that. For those of you who know me and who are as horrified but not as surprised as you should be, as I am, about what happened at the Capitol two days ago, um, yeah, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. I do want to ask everybody to please stop comparing um, the riot at the Capitol and the insurgents to the protesters for the Black Lives Matter movement. I, I realize that the majority of us, and, I, and I'm guilty of it, whenever we talk about it, we are contrasting the use of uh, force by the police department in order to control what was a peaceful protest with people outside of a federal building who were not attempting to gain forcible entry versus a bunch of white people who lost an election fairly and are upset about it, who decided to climb the walls on our nation's most sacred property and who flung themselves through doors that were opened by police in some cases to basically take hostage our most hollowed halls. I'm not sure if you guys are aware, if you've seen this, but there are two young ladies who are aides to the House and the Senate. They are only aides who had the presence of mind to gather all of the electoral ballots and to take them as they fled the Capitol. Had the insurgents been able to get their hands on those, they could have burned those electoral votes. We could have had an absolute nightmare of of an election field. And I and I have to say that I am so very grateful that the people who stormed the Capitol had no sense of any kind of 
plan. <laughs> Gosh. I'm so grateful that it was a mob and it was not an actual, honest-to-goodness, planned-out movement because that could have been really horrible. Um, I think it was an absolute uh, dereliction of duty for the police to stand down and allow that to happen. Um, Donald Trump has been... Ex 45 has been extremely... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? What is the name of the Minnesota representative? Senator Olan Imar, is that her name? Um, AOC. Um, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so bad with names right now. I'm so mad. Um, there have been several, uh, particularly women of color, uh, in the House and in the Senate that have... Um, gotten on the wrong side of 45 and he has been very very vocal about how they're not american and they should go back to where they came from and they're ruining our country and had a mob full of ticked off white men made it to that chamber and w decided to take it upon themselves that a hostage would be a great idea i don't know if any of you have ever seen any war movies but this thing where they depict that women and children are the first victims because of shock and awe factor, that's not a lie. Historically, that's what happens. And the amount of danger that those people were put in... Yeah. Um, and then to hear that the Department of Defense refused to send the National Guard when the D.C. officials requested it. Um, so some of you may know that I am prior service army and um, I took an oath. I took an oath that a lot of my constituents took and that a lot of um, officials in Washington took. And there's a very, very clear portion in that that says that you shall defend your nation against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And people really like to quote it, but apparently we don't really like to act on that. And um, I find it heartbreaking. I find it heartbreaking what was allowed to happen. I don't find very much sacred. Um, I'm not religious in any way, shape, or form. But I was raised Catholic. Um, and there, I have to tell you honestly, um, I maintain that any place that you should be allowed to let your guard down is considered sacred. So your home, your school, your place of worship, whatever that may be, whether it's your church, your synagogue, your mosque, I don't care, your place of worship, you should be safe. Where our nation's laws are created and where these people convene, especially in a pandemic, putting themselves at risk in order to carry out their duties that are set forth by the Constitution of this, of this country, <clears throat> um, I hear some dude sitting in the chair that the vice president sat in not five minutes before with his dirty feet all over the desk. And <laughs> it's fine. Ah, it's fine. Anyway, so if you're new and this is your first time sitting through one of mine, um, this is not abnormal. We do talk about it here. Um, we're not going to turn off the face of what this nation is just to be comfortable with our knitting. Um, so we have knitting is to be able to face the hard stuff. And knitting gives you that comfort and that quiet space to be able to gather that fortitude to be able to move forward forward because the only way out is through. So, um, I'm horrified by what happened and I'm not really surprised. Um, I am going to ask you to please stop comparing it. Sorry, I got off on a tangent. Please stop comparing it to the Black Lives Matter movement because what is happening with, um, white rioters is not the same thing that is happening with protesters, uh, largely a community of color who is protesting, sanctioned violence against their own community. Um, Black Lives Matter protests, especially in a place like Portland, uh, where they were so violently responded to by the police force, that was absolutely unnecessary. Those uh, gatherings were largely very peaceful. Um, and the majority of the time that you found somebody who was starting trouble, it was somebody planted by uh, the right wing who was there to cause trouble to make the protests look bad. Um, and those, uh, I saw another, I saw a Twitter post. I don't remember who wrote it. Um, somebody with a, not their real name, uh, but it had said something about it appeared that the Capitol Police had lost the key to the closet where they kept their swap material. 
or their, their SWAT equipment. And I couldn't help but laugh about that because the responses to these two groups have been so absolutely different, right? You know, so um, your peaceful protests here when it's a community of color, you know, that's receiving an armed response, you know, and, and white protesters, whenever they are looting and rioting, they're not receiving any kind of a response, you know? <clears throat> we have, <coughs> excuse me, we have rioters and insurgents attempting to overthrow our democracy on Capitol grounds. And there's police taking selfies with these people. And please don't compare the two because what happened with the rioters and insurgents at the Capitol is absolutely a direct result of centuries of white supremacy. Centuries of white supremacy. So from the times that white people um, upheld Jim Crow laws, from the times that the Arkansas Nine were, or the Little Rock Nine were um, violently abused when schools were finally segregated, segregated, from the way that white mobs responded to black sit-ins during the civil rights movement. Um, the way that white lawmakers created loopholes in order to uh, grant white slave owners the, the right to um, force themselves upon their, their uh, Negro female slaves in order to create babies that would then be their property. I, um, this is a centuries, if not a millennia old, um, behavior that has been shown by white people, um, and the conquerors and, uh, which is white supremacy itself. So, um, if you're going to, uh, compare the response to, um, the rioters at the Capitol to anything, I believe that it needs to be, um, compared to other cases in which colonialism and white supremacy have been upheld by the system, and America in particular has no shortage of that. However, the Black Lives Matter protest movement is a completely different animal, and although police brutality has been absolutely rife, and it would be really great if the police would treat communities of color the same way they're treating people dressed in bullskins, or what the hell ever that guy was wearing. Y'all know who I'm talking about. You can't miss him. Um... You know, I saw, who was it? I'm so bad with names. I'm sure I've written these down. I'm so sorry, but I saw that there was a statement that said that we are not, it was um, from a black uh, educator who was saying, we are not asking you to shoot white people the way you shoot us. We are asking you to not shoot us the way you don't shoot white people. And I thought that that was just really powerful that there is such a rift between uh, responses. So I know that it's extremely difficult. I'm obviously having difficulty explaining it to you without doing it. It's extremely difficult not to compare the actions of the police force or the actions that happened on the Capitol with what's been happening with Black Lives Matter. But I'm going to ask you um, to please be mindful in your discourse and in your discussions that uh, these are two extremely different things. Uh, rioting and a coup on the Capitol is not the same thing as protest, peacefully protesting and exercising your First Amendment rights um, regarding uh, racism in this country. But they are both stemming from the same thing, which is white supremacy and racism that is um, rampant on a national level. And we all know it. Uh, People in this country really want to believe that we have somehow outgrown the who we were as slave traders. <laughs> And, uh, I don't know that there's a memory long enough for that. I, I don't, I don't know that there's a memory long enough to, memory long enough. I think memories are too long for that. Sorry. I think memories are too long for that. I don't think that we will ever not be that nation of slave traders. But I have hope that if we address the fact that we are still that nation of slave traders and we take, <coughs> excuse me active steps, not only amongst ourselves, but with our oppressed communities, communities who have suffered under our oppression and have um, been forced to uh, live with that evil, that if we can all come together and recognize that this country has this horrendous history of hatred and violence, and that maybe someday we can work 
toward something better. But until we start, I don't know, until you start, um, if you're the abuser, you can be told that you are an abuser and you can deny it all you want, which is what America's doing right now. If you're the abuser, you can acknowledge that you're the abuser and you can run away from it and hopefully you just don't hurt anybody else. If you're the abuser, you can acknowledge you are the abuser, make amends or reparations or an apology or whatever it is that you need to be doing, reparations with the person you abused. But the person you abused is under no obligation to have ever forgiven you or to have ever allowed you back in. And I feel like that's kind of, in my opinion, a way that we could look at facing how racist this country is, is that we have wronged, white people in this country have wronged communities of color um, and oppressed communities, uh, such as the LGBTQ community, for instance. Um, we have wronged them for, it's like breathing. We just do it by breathing. Like it, It's just our natural state of existence is to wrong these communities. And I think only by allowing these communities to be part of the reparations process and to actually put forth reparations are we ever going to be able to get past it. You have to be able to show that you aren't that person anymore. Um, I wonder how we would do it. How could you bring those communities in? I mean, it seems to be... If we would just listen, I feel like we... I feel like this country takes, like, it, it takes a step forward and we're all excited. Um, John Ossoff and... The communities of color were able to raise up largely by their own hands and, and their own help to be able to deliver a democratic, we, they turned Georgia blue, you guys. <laughs> like they turned Georgia, which is historically the, one of the biggest epicenters of slavery and, and land ownership and, and white supremacy. And they were able to turn it blue. And that is absolutely fabulous. And we are going to have a Catholic president and, uh, um, a Jewish majority leader, or whatever, you know, <laughs> just, it's so good. It's so good. There's going to be our first black Asian vice president and a female in our legislation. There's so much representation for communities of color that is finally being put into place. And maybe someday that picture of the people who are creating legislation about reproductive rights won't just be a bunch of crotchety old white men who um, don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> okay. I'm done. Congratulations, Georgia, on, um, your successes this week. Um, and I think we should end that subject on that note. Um, if you're still here, thanks so much for sticking around. Um, take a big drink. Take, take a long drink. You should know coming to me that you're gonna need a drink with you. <laughs> I want to share my mug with you and I don't know if the camera will pick it up. My friend Sienna for Christmas got me some Bones coffee. Um, it was fine. It was good actually. It was really good. Um, she got me the white Russian flavor. I'm really not big on flavored coffee. So as far as coffee goes, I'm not the one to take a, um, don't, don't listen to my opinion. Okay. I drink straight espresso. Like I want four shots on a cup with some sugar and I'm done, you know, or four shots over ice and I'm good. Like that's what I'm after. If you like flavored coffee, I really did like the White Russian. It was very good. And Meg from Bad Wolf Girl uh, Studios, she drinks bones like it's religion. So, um, yeah, maybe she's a better uh, piece of information for you. Uh, recommender. You know what I mean? Like, maybe she has a stronger recommendation than I do. But Sienna got me a mug. Now, my all-time favorite Christmas show from the time I was four has been A Christmas Story. And of course, TBS used to play it on loop. And of course, we watched it. And it's my all-time favorite movie. And it was one of my dad's favorite movies. And uh, I lost my dad when I was 17. He died of brain cancer. And so having something... We weren't all that close. He he worked a lot. And he was not um, 
of that breed of dad who hung out with his kids or like his kid I'm the only one um <laughs> or like really showed a lot of affection uh, I think I got to know my dad more in the last three months of his life than I did probably in 17 years up to it so um for me to have a lifelong memory is I don't have very many of them you know anyway um she got me this mug from bones <clears throat> It's a skeleton version of, the, of um, A Christmas Story. So I don't know if you can see it, so I'll try. If I can't, I'll put in a picture. But we have the Oh Fudge from whenever he loses the lug nuts. Um, we have a skeleton in the pink rabbit suit. We have leg lamp right here. It's a skeleton. If you look on the other side, there's a skeleton with his tongue stuck to a pole. <laughs> um... Anyway, I just, yeah, I think it's, I think it's hysterical and I, I really love it. Um, and it, so it's the pink of his bunny suit and I think that that's great. Um, I'm actually not sure she watches my podcast, which is fine. <laughs> but if you do, Sienna, thank you so much. I really love my mug. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been a busy little bee. Not really, not really. I kind of, um... When I took my break from the podcast or when I told you that things were going to slow down, that was because I was intending on taking a few months off of sample knitting. I was having some um, arm issues, some hand and arm issues. Uh, basically, whenever I knit, I tend to do this number. I tend to like put my elbows into my sides and I just need to remember to chill. Um, but about a month into it, let me see. So in about September, I intended to take a break, or in October, I was going to take a break because it was my anniversary. Um, it was my anniversary on the 3rd, my husband's birthday on the 10th. I had a surgery for an ectopic pregnancy on the 11th. <laughs> it was fine. No issues. Um, I actually didn't even realize that that's what it was. My only symptom to that was spotting. Um, they went in with scopes. I have two little incisions. Everything's fine. I am missing the right fallopian tube. Um... After that, I mean, there was recovery, but it was fine. It wasn't a big deal, you know. Um, I had some abdominal issue or abdominal pain, I guess, for about a month. Couldn't do sit-ups. I don't want to do those anyway. It wasn't really too sad. <laughs> uh, but I never had to go back or anything. I had no complications. Um, and then I got a commission from Jamie Hoffman, who is Knitosophy. Anybody who's been following me for a while, you know that I knit for her very regularly. Um, as a matter of fact, I did... three sweaters for her just last year, four sweaters, the swallowtail, the rattlesnake, the monarch. I feel like there was one more in there, but I also know that I did a couple for Farmer's Daughter Fibers, so maybe one of those was that one. Um, anyway, so I did the monarch sweater for her, and that is this piece right here. Um, I don't have it to show you, obviously, because it has been photographed and released. Um, and yeah, so I finished that. That was knit out of Neighborhood Fiber Company, which is a company that Jamie really likes to support. Uh, Neighborhood is owned by a black woman in Baltimore, Maryland. It is absolutely beautiful yarn. If you can get your hands on it, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, and I love being able to sample knit for somebody who consciously makes those choices. That's really cool. So then holidays hit. Um, what did I do for holidays? I... Didn't knit for holidays. My deadline for the Monarch was by the 1st of December, or 1st of January. So I basically just worked on that over the Christmas time. Um, I knit a little uh, baby set as my like Christmas cast on, I guess, or something like that. My palette cleanser. And that's a picture of this here. And I also knit um, another hat uh, that I'll show you in a minute out of that same color combo for the baby set. Um, but I didn't photograph that one, uh, and they've all been packed up and they've been sent out along with a uh, small blanket, a small throw blanket that I had crocheted up years ago sitting in a chest and I sent it out to them. Those are going to my friend Camille, whom I knit the Svelia for, which is a v-neck gray long sleeve cozy sweater. Um, they are for her daughter Ames. Um... I'm going to knit some more for them later. Camille requested a Mommy and Me set for 
the Estrella sweater by Meg, uh, Meg Regan of Bad Wolf Girl. We were just talking about her. Uh, and that one has like a moon chart on it. I'll put, a, I'll put a picture, but there's a baby version too. And so she asked for a mommy and me set. Uh, and she purchased the yarn already, so I guess I should probably get cracking. <laughs> um, anyway, I guess I could talk about that in plans. I don't really separate my podcast if you're new. I kind of just flow of consciousness do this thing, so. Um, let's see, what was the next finished object? I think the next finished object, you guys, was my blanket. Um, I tend during the winter and Christmas to go on huge, huge granny strike kicks. And I did that with this one. Um, so I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I'll put a picture of it here, but this is from here to there to there. So this one is about 55 inches wide. The last time that you saw it, I'm pretty sure that my stitch marker was right around here. And so I literally did half of a blanket over the last couple of months. Um, a couple of this, a little bit of this was done in the fall, but the majority of it was done at Christmas. And then this is the first half that was already finished that you've already seen. And we've already talked about the majority of this is knit in dragon horde yarn. I got an advent calendar from her last year. So the majority of it is dragon horde yarn, O loops, and then it's filled in with, um, leftovers of the Sweet Sparrow Advent all from last year. Um, I did not get the Sweet Sparrow Advent event. I wasn't fast enough. <laughs> or I was fast enough. I, I thought she was done. And so I purchased a different one. And then uh, it turned out that she had another run. And I just, we weren't as close of friends as we are now. So I just wasn't really aware of that time. And so I missed it. I had to choose, or I had already spent my money. And so <laughs> I had to be good, sort of, or something. But then we became friends and Julie asked me if I needed minis for my blanket. And so then she just sent me extra minis she had, which I thought was really sweet. You know, she sent me um, about 10 or 12 or something. It was great. Um, yeah, and uh, that was it. So the majority of it, like I said, is Dragon Horde, O Loops, and then uh, Sweet Sparrow. I still have some Dragon Horde left. Um, this is my, it, mine lives in my fringe supply whatever this is. Porter bin? I think it's the porter bin. Anyway, so I have a ton of minis in here, and I was going through them the other day. Most of them are, I have some stress knits. I've got just leftovers of stuff. A lot of the Dragon Horde calendar still left over. I've got some Amanda Hope yarn. Um, yeah, so anyway, I started my third one. This is my third one. My first one is over there on the couch. You've seen it before. So this is my third one that I just started, and it is 80 inches wide. <laughs> so it's like almost seven feet, <laughs> which I'm super excited about, but I'm trying to really like convince myself that this is not going to get done um, in a year, that this one won't make that. So we'll see. But this one will still be uh, Dragon Horde and O Loops and then some Amanda Hope. And then I got... Um, uh, lamb strings, wool, and uh, the Sweet Sparrow advent calendars this year. And so this is my basket of minis for my two advents this year, and then these will also go into the blanket. I really wanted to do a sweater of some sort with these, um, but I find that I just really don't wear multicolored stuff all that much. So I probably won't. Oh, oh that is a big old blank spot there, doesn't it? Let me put that back. Oh, um, a lot of people ask, when I finish my blankets, my first blanket I did, I just took a plain white and I did two rows of single crochet all the way around the border. And then on this one, I really liked that effect, but I couldn't be bothered to do two rows because I didn't want to be there that long. <laughs> look, look, I'm a really, really honest creator when I do it for somebody else. But for me, sometimes I just, it's the same thing. So this time I used a half double crochet and it gives me the same depth, but it only takes one pass. And I used a white with blue speckles. And I don't remember who dyed that. And yes, there's that. So after that, I have a couple of birthdays coming up this month, including my own. 
Um, and so I couldn't, I'm a terrible gift giver, um, especially for people that I don't, I don't want to call them obligation knits because then it seems like I didn't want to do it and I felt bad and that's not the case. But these are people that I'm not, I don't see on a daily basis. Um, so I knit a couple of birthday hats. Um, I have this first, they're still wet. I'm sorry. That's why they're still on the mat, but that's fine. You'll be okay. I knit this first one. This is called the Swirl Wind Toque. I will put the designer on the screen. I can't remember her name right now. It is knit out of Dream in Color Classy. So it's a worsted in the color Electric Mauve. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. It turned out really pretty in this hat. I'm really excited about it. I use those yeah four the four blocks the alphabet four blocks I bought a pack of them at Walmart when my son was really really little and then of course he like hardly ever played with them except to take them apart and then use the letters as hammers and then uh, somebody recommended to me I could use them as blocking mats and so that's what I do um, I am actually keep looking at the floor because I have eight pairs of socks and two sweaters blocking on the floor right now because I did laundry day I, full disclosure, don't wash, I will probably wear my socks, I wear my socks until they're stretched out, until they're grow, until I just don't like them anymore, so probably I'd say I'd wear one pair of socks for a whole week, because I'm just putzing around the house, and I do wear them in my shoes sometimes, not if I'm running, to get hot, but like if we're going to the store, I'll slip them in my shoes, I don't care. Um, and then I have my Bronwyn and my painting sweater both on the ground right now, and I wear those all all the time and I usually just wait until they get really stretched out and uncomfortable and then I'll block them and put them on the ground uh my painting sweater I've actually that one's knit out of Manos Manos del Uruguay in the Alegria base and I've put that one in the dryer and it's been fine um I'm not going to do that with my brawn one obviously that's Brooklyn Tweed a dryer trip would be terrible <laughs> but the socks and stuff like I'll dry the socks on occasion Sometimes I wash them in the machine on a gentle cycle. It just depends on what I'm washing. I already had to hand wash the Bronwyn. I figured I would just hand wash everything. I go back and forth. I don't always use the machine. I don't always hand wash. It just depends. But I'm lucky that I have um, a top loader. So my washing machine um, has a really gentle cycle um, or I can just fill it with water and then soak everything in there and then run it on a like I run my rinse and spin cycle and uh, as long as I pay attention to it and stop it after it finishes filling the, you know what I mean? Filling the tub, then I can put my stuff in there and I can let it soak. And then I can, um, when I'm done, I can just start the cycle again and it will spin out all of the water and then I can lay it on the ground and let it dry. You don't care about my laundry. This is not a dryer podcast. Um, the other hat I made is called the Timber Trails hat. Again, I'll put the designer. Um, and this is knit out of Malabrigo Rios in the Archangel colorway. So, I did both of those. Um, I actually put on Instagram the other day, I think that this, I can count on one hand how many hats I've knit in six years. And that includes the three or four that I've knit <laughs> in the last month. Um... Actually, uh, the two for the baby, the two for Ames, she's nine months, she's not a baby, but I mean, the two for her that I did, those were my first kid's hats. I've never knit a kid's hat before, like, not even for my own kid. Um, the other two adult hats that I knit were when I was first learning how to do color work. Um, I did knit them out of Swan's Island, which is a beautiful yarn that I highly recommend. I still wear those hats. So. I have a very, what's that charming British word? Cheeky? I have a very cheeky, I want to say little squirrel, but he's not little. <laughs> he's a pretty big guy out in my backyard. Just romping around and he's super cute. His mouth is full and he's like super interested in my ground right now. I think he's burying. So hopefully he remembers where they were. Um, if you've been a follower for a while, uh, you'll know that we had a lab. Um, and, uh, he was 12 when he passed last April. So, um, I guess my yard is now the safe place for wildlife. <laughs> my dog wasn't interested in squirrels. He was fine with them just hanging out or being here or whatever, but they always, you know, he was big, so they were concerned about him. Um, 
Anyway, that was really cute. Sorry. So what else do I have? I have a work in progress, which is a sock because socks. Um, I only knit shorties because I'm lazy and I have really thick calves. And so I don't like long socks because they don't ever fit. Even if I hand knit them myself and then they slide down and I get mad. So this, I use um, the Row City Rollers pattern. I kind of hacked it a little bit. Um, and so this is my vanilla sock pattern now. Um, I do the rolled cuff from the Row City Roller. I knit, ooh, sorry. I knit 10 rounds. I do a standard heel flap and uh, gusset turn, whatever. Um, not a standard. I use the mini heel flap adjustment from Mina Phillip. You can get it in any one of her vanilla patterns. Like she has a vanilla sock or something like that and it's a free pattern and it's in there. So I knit mine on 60 stitches on size zeros because I'm a loose knitter. And then I just go down for eight and a quarter inches and then I do a toe. I do an anatomical toe so there is a definite left and right foot. I broke a hip um, when I was 20, 21. Anyway, um, my right leg is tiniest bit shorter than my left leg and so whenever I walk my foot twists a different way and I end up with holes in the ball of my foot from the friction. Having the anatomical toes stops the sock from swiveling over around my foot and I don't have that problem anymore. Oh that was I'm sorry. It's been a while can you tell? This is Nomadic Yarns in her Tweety base the color is called Marshmallow World. It was a winter uh, winter one. I'm not sure she carries it anymore. Um, she does, however, make a... This is the New Year colorway. <laughs> it's like black with like champagne gold. And I think there's like a silver section with like pink speckles or something like that. I ordered that. It's on its way. Um, I love Nomadic Yarn. She's my probably my favorite self-striping dyer. Um, I also super love the fact that you can buy her skeins in 50 gram balls. So what that means for me is that because I knit shorties, I can knit a pair of socks and have a little ball left over. And although it looks like a lot, it's really not. This is probably like on the floor. It's probably seven or eight grams at the very, very most. So it's enough to put in your blanket and get some of it, you know, and the self-striping, the way that the colors change is really fun for uh, a crochet. Um, and then, yeah, and then it's over. So this is the problem I'm having right now. Um, I knit these two hats and I have over a third of a skein of each color left. And I, what am I going to do with that? I don't knit worsted, you guys. Like, what am I going to do with it? So it's not enough for another hat, even a baby hat. And the colors don't really go together, so I can't stripe them. And it, it's frustrating. Um, I have discovered that I am uh, not really an accessories knitter. Um, I like to be able to use a skein and then be done with it. Uh, my Bronwyn actually called for an entire two skeins more than what I used. Um, I don't know if that's because I'm a loose knit knitter so my row gauge builds faster or if they just seriously overestimate. <laughs> like I legitimately do not know what it is. Um, but it's really frustrating. I always end up I don't really care so much about the overspending on yarn. I don't really care so much about that. It's really aggravating, but um, I need to get better about not caking up yarn that I'm not gonna. Lane is coming out with another book and it's called Strands of Joy. And there is a pattern in it called the Woodland Cardigan or Woodland or something like that. Anyway, it has trees and a bear along the body of the cardigan. Um, and then a contrast rib band and stuff like that. And I have yarn for that. It's um, Cumbria from a fiber company. I believe it's BFL, uh, Massam and Mohair. Um, and I have three skeins of the main color and one of the contrast. And for some reason, I caked up all three skeins of the con of the main color when I first got it. I don't remember what I was planning on making, but I don't make long cardigans. I make fitted tops, so I never need. I'm not going to need the fourth main color. I'll need the three for the main color and then the one for the contrast. Maybe. Um, so, but I have this other skein caked up. So, like, I can't return it to a store and I have to find somebody who's going to want it. I have an entire bag of D-Stash. Um, I'll link my D-Stash account on the screen and in the description box below. Please feel free to look at it. None of the prices are set. Make me an offer. 
Um, but you're paying for shipping. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I don't, not looking to make a profit off of it. I just want it gone. It just sits here. Uh, my husband and I were talking about this cubby right up here. Uh, I'm not going to use any of that. Most of that I'm not going to use. I don't do multicolored things. I guess as I've started to knit for myself, you know, I knit for other people. Which is great because then they get to try things that I would never make for myself. Like the rattlesnake tee. I loved the rattlesnake tee. It was so much fun. I'm never going to wear that. I'm not going to wear it. But I got the experience of getting to knit it in colors that were really cool in a neighborhood fiber company, which is a fantastic brand and not the cheapest. Um, no indie dye ever is the cheapest, I guess, but I got to do that and it was a wonderful experience. And even though I'll never do it for myself, I still got it. And that was really cool. But now I have all these leftovers <laughs> and I know that everybody feels like they're being so generous when they tell you to keep the leftovers, but I mean, I don't have that much personal knitting time. And when I do, especially whenever it's like a DK or a worsted, like I don't knit in that very frequently. So I know who would have thought that we would complain that there was too much yarn in a skein, but um, I had one skein of fingering weight from Hugh Loco that I did that baby set in. I got two hats and a pair of mittens out of that. And I just... <laughs> Yay that you get that much out of it, I guess. But I mean, you get, I get tired of a color. <laughs> so it's really ungrateful. I'm sorry, but it's true. Um, so yeah, I don't, I always tell Julie, I'm like, you should just expect a box, you know, I tell Julie and, and Sienna, a couple of my friends, I just tell them like, you guys should just expect like a box every month of just things I'm not going to use or leftovers of stuff. And if I didn't feel like I was dumping my trash on somebody else, I would totally do that. So, yeah. Um, as far as plans go, I have the Redford for my husband that needs to finally get done. I got like three inches, four inches into the body, something like that, and stopped and I was like, this seems really big. Why did I get this far? And it was, it was like 12 inches bigger than what he wanted. I don't know what in the world and I had to put that down for a while because I was mad. It's on the needles again. It's restarted. I've knit literally a centimeter. <laughs> this poor guy. My husband wants the, the Redford, which is a Brooklyn tweed pattern, and is the most basic sweater ever created. The problem with it is, is that it's also seamed. So you basically knit a rectangle and then another rectangle and then two more rectangles to go up the sides and then you seam it all together. And that's really great because it creates this like exposed seam idea. So it almost looks like a sweatshirt that was flipped inside out. And it's a really pretty basic piece, but I'm not going to seam it. I'm not. I hate purling. Um, I don't hate purling for the reason most people do. My purling is actually really quick. I do really well with it. But the way that I hold the needles, because I was a crocheter first, I guess the way that I hold the needles, I don't know. But I end up with pain in my arms whenever I'm purling too much. I'm not going to purl it. So I want to knit it in the round and I don't know what my problem is. I'm using the recommended yarn, but my gauge is weird. And you would think that I had never knit a sweater for somebody else before or that my samples were like never quite on gauge, but they are, they're always on gauge and they always turn out the right size. I don't know if I'm having so much problems with this sweater. Anyway, I'm knitting that out of loft. Brooklyn Tweed Loft in the cast iron colorway, which is beautiful and black and wonderful, and I love it. I want to make myself a laurel out of this white yarn up here and some spin cycle that I have. I have the Astraea sweater, which is the moon chart one, and then the little, which is called the moonbeam. I want to make the woodland cardigan when it comes out, but that's not out yet which is probably saving me right now. <laughs> it's a yarn caked up for that. Like I could just go, right? <laughs> it's for me. So I, so I want to do that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I've got guys. Um, I think I'm going to end it here. Uh, usually for my birthday, my husband every year basically says, pack a bag. You're going to want 
a big project to knit on or you're going to want a little project to knit on or whatever. And then I get in the car and I don't know where we're going <laughs> and we go someplace for my birthday. So that happens on the 24th. Usually we start to leave like next week. Well, this year, obviously, we're not going anywhere. And so for my birthday, he um, has decided he's going to repaint my kitchen cabinets for me. They're this really ugly. I'm sorry if your kitchen has these and, and I'm sure it's beautiful in your home. But in my home, all of my cabinets are white and all of my trim is white and my walls are gray throughout the whole house except the kitchen. And in the kitchen, somehow we have pine cabinets that are really light pine that I, I personally don't care for and brown countertops. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened when they were building. Um, and I don't know if that has, if all the white and the crown molding and stuff has been added later. I know this used to be a rental. So the owners, you know, I know that they lived here for a while and then rented it for a little bit before they finally decided they weren't coming back. None of that matters. You don't care. We're painting my cabinets white so that it will show off or it will go better with the countertops and it will go better with the rest of the house and lighten up because my kitchen is in the middle of my living room. Um, if you look back on some older water, podcast and probably vlogmas you'll see my house how my house is set up so you have like a formal when you walk in the door you have a living room and then it expands like into the kitchen and the other living room and then around the corner or whatever and then you have bedrooms in the back so my entire front of my house is completely open to each other or to to itself I mean and my kitchen is just this kind of drab spot right in the middle I my husband's being a sweetheart and he said that for my birthday he would repaint the cabinets um, unfortunately I have to help, so that kind of sucks, <laughs> but it'll go really fast. I'm really excited. Um, you know, and before any of you are like, oh, what a, you know, what a big thing. My husband is so stir crazy right now, um, from pandemic and all of that. Like, I feel like if I didn't let him tackle some giant house, uh, project that, you know, he would end up, I don't, I don't know what he would do. He would end up, whoa, you cut it all off. <laughs> nope. Brad combed it. Brad combed it? What do you think of it? I love it. You I do? I always wanted it backwards. Yeah? See? I like it. It's smooth. It is smooth. Okay. Can I show the viewers? <laughs> <laughs> this is my son Hector, for those of you who weren't here for Vlogmas, and he just got a haircut today. And apparently, the barber decided that he was going to fix it for him. So, here's your new do. What do you think? I love it. Good. I'm happy. All right, let me finish up. Okay, I'm almost done. Okay. The guys had to go get haircuts today, and um, it's been a while. <laughs> so it broke down finally, and they went. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, he's going to do the kitchen for me, and like I'm helping, obviously. So I'm super excited about that to be done. Uh, and yeah, um, now that they're home, I guess I better go. Um, I know that we are supposed to finish sanding today so that we can start painting. So, um, it was really, really great chatting with you guys and catching up with you. Um, thanks so much for your patience and for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I'm not going to make any promises about coming back more regularly because I feel like every time I do that, then I don't talk to you for three months. So I really loved Vlogmas. I really miss doing it. So I'm hoping to be able to get back in front of the camera a little bit more so that we can chat. Um, oh, before I go, it's been introduced several times before, but I'll do it again. This is my siren sweater by Annie Hass. She is this bird knits on Instagram. It is lambstrings yarn in Plague Doctor, who is who I got my advent. Actually, funny story. My two advents are lambstrings and sweet sparrow. So this is uh, lambstrings in the Plague Doctor, which was a club color for one of her months last year. And then this is a club color from sweet sparrow. It's called Mabon. It was for her Celtic club last year. Anyway, that's my podcast. So thanks so much for coming by, you guys. Um, keep your head up. Drink some coffee. Turn off the news. Give yourself 20 minutes a day where nobody needs you and nobody wants anything from you and nobody can surprise you with bad news. <laughs> That's my advice. If, if you can. If you can. If you can't, um, I have an open DM. Feel free to Feel free to lay on me how your day is going, and we'll see what we can do. All right.